Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shamla Devi from the Department of MBA, IB. And coming to today's topic, it is about formation and registration of business entities. Uh, we are going to study about what are the forms of business and what are the legal aspects uh, in order to form the business and uh, in order to incorporate the company the legal aspects that we have to come across okay so before going to uh, know about the formation uh, or else the incorporation of a company uh, we'll see uh, just uh, an introduction part of forms of business like uh, how many uh, different com type of companies are there okay so if we see uh, the different business entities uh, in our country uh, one is company LLP limited liability partnership and partnership firms last one is individual which is nothing but sole proprietorship okay under this under company we will study about public limited company private limited company one person company likewise okay so each and uh, every type of company have, will differentiate in terms of uh, uh, legal aspects uh, like uh, in entity wise or else uh, taxation wise okay formation wise so uh, differentiations can be seen in public limited company private limited company one person company okay so uh, formation will also be uh, will also differentiate in all these companies likewise if we see in llp and partnership firms also okay so there will be differentiation likewise sole proprietorship here also we will see the legal aspects regarding the formation of a company okay so we can conclude that for each and every type of a company okay or else the firms there are different uh, legal aspects the company has to follow while incorporating the company or else the formation of a company according to that particular country's constitution okay the companies has to incorporate their companies okay so we can see how these companies differentiate means uh, like uh, on legality wise legal entity status on registration and compliances wise uh, applicability of tax wise funding in business wise okay so on all these uh, aspects differentiation can be seen in all these companies okay so so if we see here before incorporation of a company or its formation of a company the registrar of companies is an office under the indian ministry of corporate affairs that deals with administration of the companies act 2013 okay so where first of all if we want to have a company either private company public limited company or opc one person company first of all we we need to apply so where we need to apply means we have to apply in mca mca is nothing but ministry of corporate affairs okay so this deals with according to the provisions of the companies act okay ministry of corporate affairs every company need to register or else uh, go here for to apply okay ministry of corporate affairs so if we see in this partnership case okay so where should this firms register even though even uh, limited liability partnership which is known as llp this also should uh, go for mca okay ministry of corporate affairs but coming to partnership firm this should register in every state government has established the office of the registrar of firms which is vested with the powers 
to register the firm and issue the certificate of registration of the firm okay so whenever a company goes for registration so the roc gives the or else the roc issues the certificate of registration okay so the this roc where should the partnership firms go means the partnership firms has to register with the state government every state government has established registrar of firms okay so there they should go and register their companies okay where the uh, uh, registrar of firms they vest with the powers okay to register the firms and issue the certificate of registration okay so Certi they issue the certificate of registration to partnership firms okay now so as far as if we see public limited private limited one person company and limited partnership liability partnership first they have to approach ministry of corporate affairs okay if we see in third aspect sole proprietorship so there is no government registration needed in order to start a sole proprietorship business in india because sole proprietorship naturally will be like a, a small retail stores or a provisional uh, pro, provisional stores okay or else uh, 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 beauty parlors so all those comes under sole proprietorship so uh, they need they, they these uh, this type of uh, sole proprietorship okay this type of companies uh, uh, they don't need any uh, registration they no need any uh, documentation okay so uh, just a license uh, can uh, they have to take up a license from the government that to uh, not all the uh, sole traders have to take license from the government to some uh, some portion of uh, uh, trades only they have to go for a license okay so here if we see uh, regarding the purpose of uh, registration wise okay so there is no government registration needed okay for sole proprietorship okay just uh, maximum no traders uh, need any documents or else need any license also to some extent only to some traders only license is needed for some business uh, businesses okay so finally we can say that for sole proprietorship registration is not needed okay so these are some of the uh, uh, types of business entities okay so that we follow in india so company llp and firms and individual level which is nothing but sole proprietorship okay so for each and every case okay here in public limited company private limited company one person company okay they have to follow the uh, legal aspects according to the companies act 2013 okay so they have to follow uh, how to register the registration process will be there for a company so according to companies act 2013 they have to follow the procedure of the companies act okay and then they can get the registration certificate issue of registration certificate from the roc roc is nothing but registrar of companies okay here if we see what is public company private company one person company means private company means a private company is any company we can say that any company uh, if we see private company any company which uh, restricts its members okay right to transfer their shares okay in private limited company we will see okay restriction of shares okay restriction of shares at the same time it limits the maximum number of members to 200 only okay means the members in a private limited company should be uh, should not exceed 
200 members okay maximum number limit of maximum number is 200 members okay 2 to 200 members and most importantly it prohibits any invitation to public to subscribe for any of its shares okay it can be formed with two or more persons as members so private limited company means it prohibits transfer of shares maximum number members should be 200 only okay and uh, it prohibits invitation to public to subscribe for its shares okay so it cannot uh, go for uh, public uh, selling of shares okay so if we see uh, in public limited company okay it public limited company is any company uh, we can say that which is not a private company and it can be uh, formed as seven with the uh, minimum number of uh, seven members and uh, and also if we see maximum number it is unlimited or else it is infinite okay so public limited company means they can uh, uh, they can go for public issue okay and transferability of shares can be seen in public limited company and maximum number is infinite here okay minimum number uh, members should be seven okay in public limited company seven if we see in private limited company it is two okay minimum numbers should be two maximum is 200 okay but if we see here minimum number members should be seven maximum is unlimited okay so if we see one person company what is one person company means uh, any company which has only one person as a member okay so one person only runs the business okay so this is about the public limited company private limited company and one person company so we have to see uh, what are the steps to be followed for formation of a company or incorporation of a company in all these aspects okay private limited company public limited company one person company okay so what would be the process So here I have just given about what are the compliances and how to register in a tab, uh, table form. Okay. So if we see formation of a company, see till now we have seen different uh, types of company or else different business entities like public limited company private limited company and one person company okay so regarding those what what is the process what is the procedure for formation of a company or incorporation of a company so which is nothing but a registration of a company incorporation is also known as registration of a company okay so a company comes into existence when a number of persons come together with a view to form an association to exploit the business opportunities by bringing together men material many and money and management which are known as four m's okay so here company how to form a company okay so when number of persons come together okay why to earn profits okay to earn profits so to exploit the business opportunities by bringing the different uh, resources like men material money and management okay so why we enter into business uh, aspects or else why we enter into business market why because in order to gain profits in the business so in order to gain business uh, profits in the business we have to pull up all the resources okay 
so if we see the procedure for the formation of a company there are four steps majorly there are four steps okay first one is promotion of a company okay next one is incorporation of a company promotion incorporation subscription of capital or else it is also known as raising of capital and finally commencement of the business okay so promotion incorporation or registration subscription commencement of business okay so unlike a public limited company which is forbidden from raising funds from the public a private company is not required to produce a prospectus or complete the formalities of a minimum subscription okay so we know that in previous slide only we have learned that for private company there is a no transferability of shares okay no transferability of shares uh, not going for uh, uh, issuing for public okay uh, issuing for public shares okay so but if we see in public limited company there is transferability of shares listed in uh, listed in public limited companies okay and they will go for uh, issuing of shares to public okay so they they also submit all the prospectus but if we see in private limited company it is not required to submit the prospectus why because they are not going for the issuing of shares to public okay so if we see the first aspect which is nothing but the promotion okay promotion so promotion of a company so what does promotion of a company means promotion of a company is the first important preliminary stage of this formation of a company okay so it is the process of organizing planning and finances of a business enterprise okay promotion is nothing but okay organizing planning okay and planning the finances of a business enterprise means how to allocate the financial resources in promoting a company okay so the persons who undertake the task of promotion are called the promoters okay so who is a promoter means so if we want to go for promotion of a company we need a person so that person is known as promoter so the person who undertake the task of promotion is known as promoter and the promoter is a person who brings a company into existence okay so a company may have several promoters a promoter may be an individual a firm or body corporate okay again i'm saying promoter may be individual or else a firm also okay or body corporate means consisting of uh, number of individuals which is known as a body corporate so one existing company may promote another new company also okay so promoter means a firm as i said a firm may also considered as a promoter how one existing company may promote another new company okay so in that way it is also a promoter he and he stands in a this promoter stands in a fiduciary position towards the company okay fiduciary position towards the company means uh, he he has the obligation he has the duty he has the responsibility towards the company okay so he has to know all the things uh, that favors the promotion of the company okay so uh, if we define the promoter according to the companies act 2013 of section 2 subsection 69 who is a promoter means promoter can be named as the person who is named in a prospectus okay so companies submit prospectus to the roc registrar of companies 
so while submitting prospectus to the roc in that prospectus whoever name is there okay he is considered as the promoter of the company okay he is the person uh, promoter is the person who discovers the idea who initiates the company who is the first person of the company so promoter can be defined as the person who the name of the person in a prospectus okay who has been named as in a prospectus okay or else identified by the company in the annual return referred in section 92 okay and also control over the affairs of the company the person who is having the control over the affairs of the company directly or indirectly so he is also known as promoter of the company okay the person who is having the name in prospectus the person who is having the control over the affairs of the company and also the person who advises okay who directs who advises who directs and also who instructs who give instructions to the board of directors of the company okay so he is the promoter he is considered as a promoter of the company okay so what what does a promoter do what the, what functions a uh, promoter performs means uh, identification of business opportunities okay uh, he performs uh, functions promoter performs functions like identification of business opportunities okay so which business uh, gives more uh, profits okay likewise identification of business opportunities means the opportunity could be in the form of developing a new product or service making a product available through new channels or uh, any other investment opportunity likewise and also uh, the technical and economic feasibility of the opportunity is also assessed by the promoter okay means he will see the feasibility of technicalities okay uh, likewise uh, it means that it uh, technically uh, possible to implement or not likewise financial uh, viability is there or not means every company activity uh, uses the capital okay so the promoters must calculate the amount of money needed to uh, pursue the recognized business ideas so if money cannot be secured the project must be abandoned so likewise he has to calculate the pros and cons and uh, he has to see the economic feasibility like uh, the project might be technically and financially possible but if it may have a, a slim possibility of being profitable okay then he has to see uh, he has to uh, focus on the cost benefit analysis of the company uh, to find out its future visibility okay so likewise he has to see uh, he has to function like name approval so what does name approval means the promoters must choose a name for the company okay and also file an application for approval to the registrar of companies in the state where the firm's uh, registered office will be located okay so the name he has to file the name if the proposed name has been rejected by the roc means he has to see another alternate name okay so in the application to the registrar of companies three names are submitted in priority order okay so according to that the uh, roc will select and it will accept the name for that particular company likewise fixing up uh, signatories to the memorandum of association because memorandum of association articles of association will be submitted a prospectus will be submitted to the roc at incorporation of a company so the signatures uh, should be seen uh, by this promoter okay so he has to look over all these aspects uh, is there a sign signature is uh, is there consent of directors okay is there consent is consent is there or not uh, appointment of professionals is there or not okay uh, likewise uh, preparation of necessary documents 
for ROC. So documents required like the MOA, AOA, prospectus. Okay. So all has been done or not. All should be seen by the promoter. Okay. So all these are some of the functions that will be performed by the promoter. Okay. So this is about the promotion. Okay. So finally we can say that uh, promoter. What does promoter uh, do means discovery of idea detailed investigation assembling the proposition and finally financing the proposition okay so these are some of the stages of the promoter or promotion okay uh, means discovery of idea means promoter discovers the idea to set up a business with aim of making a profit and he will do a detailed investigation like discovering the idea promoter starts doing detailed investigation regarding the cost profitability production demand of the product etc okay likewise he also analyzes the amount of capital required and degree of risk involved okay likewise uh, after detailed investigation he will do assembling the proposition assembling the proposition means uh, after investigation he starts collecting all the resources necessary to form a company okay like men machine machine machinery uh, uh, material etc he makes preliminary contracts for purchase of material machinery uh, recruitment of staff etc okay and finally financing the proposition means uh, the promoter arranges the finance required for the entire operation okay so this is about the promoter or else the promotion so if we see uh, the next aspect is incorporation okay so what does incorporation or registration means see here the registration of company is a legal recognition given to the body corporate under the company law okay so the procedure for registration has been clearly stated in section 7 okay in section 7 of companies act 2013 so according to the section 7 of companies act 2013 the procedure for registration has to be followed by every company okay so this provision clearly lays down the requirements for the incorporation of a company so what are those requirements okay so all those requirements are stated in the companies act if we see uh, broadly means uh, what were those uh, requirements means uh, MOA mem memorandum of association okay articles of association okay um, and uh, list of directors okay uh, list of directors next is their consent okay written consent of the directors is to be submitted to the registrar of the companies okay likewise finally verification of the document wherein such document is to be digitally signed by any recognized chartered accountant or else cs company secretary or else advocate okay so the details of documents okay these are all the details of the documents that to be produced with roc at the time of incorporation of a company okay again i'm saying memorandum of association articles of association a list of directors where in details okay a list of directors means who are the directors their names okay occupation address all should be mentioned there and uh, is there written consent or or not for regarding the directors okay and um, the written consent is to be submitted to the registrar of the companies and finally verification of document is also should be made uh, digitally signed by any recognized recognized chartered accountant okay so all these are verified okay so that verification signature should be given digitally by any chartered accountant or else company secretary or advocate okay so uh, if we see this is about the the details that to be produced by a company for the registrar of companies which is known as roc okay and uh, how would be the procedure means the promoters have to decide certain aspects such as the type of company name of company before they can file an application for registration of the company okay and um, 
Beyond that, they have to produce all these one memorandum of association, articles of association, consent particulars. Okay, likewise. And we are we have already studied what are the types of companies because depending upon the type of company, we have to uh, form the company or else or else we have to register the company because we have co private company, public company, one person company. Okay, so depending upon the uh, company, we have to go for subscription or else we have to go for. Uh, uh, tax details or else uh, uh, legal aspects will be concerned with okay why because we have a restriction for private company for not going for transferability of shares or else uh, issuing of uh, shares okay and also the maximum number will be uh, limited to 200 only okay so likewise uh, so if we see steps for incorporation means okay the re reservation of name by filing e application okay online application so first step is reservation of the name means the promoters have to decide the name of the company okay uh, section 4 of the company act provides that the name of the company must not be identical or it should not resemble the name of a, any other existing company so the name should be given in such a way that okay the name should not be identical or else it should not be similar to any other company so moreover the name must not appear to be undesirable to central government okay and use of the name should not be an offense under the law of country okay uh, for example the name of the company should not infringe on the registered trademark infringement should not be there okay so the promoters are expected to exercise caution while choosing a name for a company once uh, once a name of a company is uh, registered means it acquires the monopoly right to use that name no other company can thereafter register with an identical or similar name as we have registered okay so so drafting of a uh, drafting and signing of memorandum of association and articles of association uh, which should be submitted with registrar of companies roc okay so these documents have to be e filed and e stamped okay so various documents like moa and aoa we have to submit those with roc okay we all know memorandum of association is also known as chapter of the company okay which is known as company's constitution and the we we, we, we can see in memorandum of association the authorized share capital that the company can raise or else the extent of liability that members undertake okay the liability of the members and also other particulars like the name of the company location of the registered office okay all this uh, can be uh, seen under memorandum of association okay and the signatories to the MOA are known as the subscribers okay and each subscriber has to take at least one share in capital of the company so these are the uh, rules regarding the MOA MOA means the subscribers are the directors or else the signatories to the MOA okay the persons who signed on MOA are the subscribers okay of the company and they should possess at least one share capital one share in the capital of a company and if we go for articles of association okay so the bylaws that govern the functioning of uh, management of a company so we can say that articles of association means uh, the internal management the functioning of internal management or the bylaws uh, of uh, internal management all the details will be given in articles of association and if we see MOA it is related to the external affairs of the affairs of the company okay so the full details regarding MOA and AOA will be given to the and submitted to the ROC and uh, coming to another step a consent of persons nominated as directors see here we, then after uh, this we have to give the names of the directors okay so who are the directors their names their addresses okay all should be provided and at the same time consent of persons should be given means in a written form uh, uh, written consent should be provided to the ROC okay who are the directors their signature with written consent and submission of statutory declaration of compliances okay so that uh, all uh, we have submitted documents are in a proper way or in a legal way okay according to the companies act only we have provided the 
documents so that statutory declaration should be given okay next uh, pay fees and amount of stamp duty electronically so uh, for the, for public limited company or private limited company different fee will be uh, vested like for registration uh, like uh, for stamp duties okay so fees will be paid uh, so uh, electronically okay so after declaration fees will be paid okay then after that it involves certificate of incorporation it will obtain the certificate of incorporation digitally signed by the roc okay so roc will give by seeing all these documents okay finally file declaration about address of registered office means where the office will be registered registered will be given so uh, so and so uh, what we, wow, so so and so place okay so in that place we are uh, going to keep the uh, office keep the company so uh, the address will be declared by the roc okay registered office and if we see broadly the procedure of incorporation okay so these are the steps regarding the uh, incorporation or registration of a company okay so if we see broadly means okay so before we are going to uh, uh, ROC okay before going to reg registration of a company or incorporation of a company definitely we should have uh, these aspects DIN should be there uh, which is known as director's identification number DIN it has to be obtained before going for uh, filing documents okay for, for registration of ROC and also along with DIN director's identification number digital signature of the promoters also should be there we all know promoters are the initial persons of the company okay so therefore digital signature should uh, be there with the uh, of the promoters also okay and both DIN which is known as director's identification number and also digital signatures will be registered with the MCA Ministry of Corporate Affairs portal okay so before filing documents with ROC definitely we should have DIN and dig digital signature of the promoters okay and both DIN and digital signatures should be registered with MCA which is nothing but Ministry of Corporate Affairs portal okay so uh, here if we see see DIN director identification number okay so in this director identification number the form will be there form dir okay dir3 in we have to fill this form and we have to give the details and submit okay likewise uh, what attachment should be given means proof of identity of the director okay address of the director signature verification of the director all should be there okay so if we go for a name application for name availability means it has another form form of inc1 okay incorporation inc means incorporation form inc1 where the name will be registered for 20 days as per company's amendment bill 2013 okay so application for name availability okay here the promoters are required to select at least six alternative names in the order of preference for the proposed company okay so the registrar of companies is required to inform about the approval of name or rejection of proposed name within seven days okay here roc they will inform to the promoter regarding this name availability okay is accepted or rejected okay within seven days roc will inform to the promoter okay once name is approved means it is kept reserved for 60 days okay so if application for incorporation is not submitted within 60 days the name can be allotted to the other applicant okay again i'm saying once name is approved it is kept or else it is reserved for 60 days okay or else if the name if if at all 
uh, we have not uh, submitted the documents regarding all aspects okay so within 60 days the name can be allotted to other applicant because as uh, the uh, previously that name is registered on our name okay but if at all we have not fulfilled uh, the documents we have not submitted the documents within the 60 days the other documents then that name will be given to other persons okay so what documents to be filed means as i said before memorandum of association articles of association okay so and uh, declaration all should be provided to the roc okay so here see file with roc from inc inc 7 okay so inc 7 means it is regarding to public limited company and private limited company this is form inc that should be submitted with roc and inc 2 is incorporation to form for opc that is one person company so if at all it is a one person company means they have to take this form inc 2 form and they have to uh, give details regarding inc 2 form okay so and they have to submit with roc after the filing inc 1 okay and in this uh, form inc 7 okay what attachments we have to give MOA, AOA, duly signed by the subscribers. Okay. So, subscribers are promoters or directors of the company. Okay. Who are who signed in the prospectus. Okay. So, if we say next one, form INC 8 means declaration. Okay. Declaration by an advocate or participating professional who is engaged in incorporation. Here, INC 3 should be given by the opc one person company or else if it is public or private limited company means they have to give form inc 8 incorporation i 8 form okay what this says inc 8 or inc 3 means they are giving declaration okay that we have submitted proper documents okay all documents so this declaration is given by advocate or else participating professional who is engaged in corporation in incorporation okay uh, professionals may be chartered accountant cost accountant company secretary in practice who is engaged in the formation of the company that all requirements of this act and rules of registration have been complied with okay so after submitting MOA, AOA, we have to declare, give a declaration. After declaration, INC 9 should be given, which is nothing but affidavit. Okay, affidavit and affidavit uh, from each of the subscribers to the memorandum and the first directors that he is not convicted of any offense or fraud in connection with promotion formation or management of any company during the preceding five years and all the documents filed with the registrar for registration of the company incorrect complete and true to the best of his knowledge and belief okay so that is the affidavit means they are uh, the person the subscribers they are uh, telling that the first person or the first director the promoter he is not convicted any offense or else any fraud in connection with the promotion of the company or formation of the company or in management of company okay so after that they have to give the address also the address for correspondence still its registered office is established because till now there is no registered office okay for uh, uh, till the registered office there the communication is needed so for that communication for that correspondence address also should be given okay here particular so for all subscribers like identity proof of witness of moa and aoa okay uh, issue of certificate of uh, incorporation means they this is related to the CIN corporate identity number okay so after providing all these 
so registrar of company issues the certificate of incorporation okay so sir, the corporate identity number so corporate identity number means it contains 21 digit uh, digits with alpha numeric code okay with uh, 12 numeric uh, 21 numeric code okay uh, and which contains six digits of the cin or the company registration number okay last six digits under 21 uh, digits okay last six digits will be the company registration number okay so and registered office so registered office means here uh, will be the registered office that will be given by the uh, company okay so company will give that we are going to keep our registered office here so within 30 days from the date of incorporation okay so after roc have sent the uh, certificate of incorporation so the the company should send the uh, registration office okay the address of the registered office within 30 days from the date of incorporation and file inc 22 okay form it should be filled okay then attachments what attachments should be given by the uh, company means if at all the company uh, is running its business on rent basis means so the rent deed okay should be submitted to the roc or else if the company is running within the premises of the director okay so the director's consent should be uh, given to the ROC okay so the registrar shall allot the company a corporate identity number which shall be a distinct identity for the company and which shall also be included in the certificate and here online filing of documents can also be done for incorporating the company okay so the legal uh, effect of incorporation as per uh, section 9 comes uh, like a company becomes a body corporate distinct from its members okay by this uh, cin number okay uh, the company becomes body corporate distinct from its members a company has perpetual succession company can sue and can be sued and the company has a right to hold and alienate its own property company debts and obligations are the liabilities of the company okay all these uh, properties can be obtained by receiving the cin okay so certificate of uh, incorporation shall be a conclusive evidence okay that all requirements of the act have been complied within respect of registration and the company is duly registered that the company came into existence on the date mentioned in the certificate okay so it is the conclusiveness it is the conclusion of the certificate of incorporation okay what is the conclusion of certificate of incorporation means all the legal aspects has been matured by the company all the requirements of the act have been complied okay so company is duly registered So, if we uh, see the third aspect under formation of a company or incorporation of a company, uh, subscription of capital, okay, or else raising of capital, flotation of capital, otherwise, okay. So, what does this mean when a company has been registered and has received certificate of incorporation, okay, it can go ahead with raising capital necessary to commence business and to carry on its operations satisfactory okay so if at all the company is in need to raise the capital okay it can go for subscription okay so private company is prohibited from inviting public we know that we have private limited company and pri public limited company so pri private company is prohibited okay from inviting public to subscribe to its share capital it has to raise necessary capital from friends and relatives by private agreement only but it cannot go for public subscription okay so if we see public company means we can see two aspects one is issue of prospectus other one is file a statement in lieu of 
prospectus so issue of prospectus means if public is to be invited to subscribe to its share capital okay so that is known as issuing a prospectus means public are invited to subscribe next file a statement in lieu of prospectus means in case capital has been arranged privately that is known as in lieu of prospectus not going for public subscription okay they have arranged the amount privately then it is known as you are you have to file regarding that aspect documents regarding that uh, arrangement uh, regarding privately means a file filing a statement in lieu of prospectus so that is subscription of capital see a public as well as private company without share, without a share capital they can start its business immediately after getting certificate of incorporation such company is not required to get certificate of commencement of business without a share capital okay company without a share capital it can start its business okay but according to companies amendment uh, or else uh, ordinance 2019 it requires that this certificate of commencement is mandatory now for public and private companies having share capital okay to be obtained within 6 months of incorporation without which it cannot commence it with its business see here without share capital without having a share capital it can start its business immediately whether it is a public company or a private company but according to the companies amendment act 2019 it requires certificate of commencement is mandatory okay it is after getting certificate of commencement only it can go for this okay it can uh, uh, having a share capital it can go which uh, okay so but in this case a public as well as private company without share capital for the for those companies it is not required certificate of commencement of business is not required but which are going for with a share capital means so such type of companies need certificate of commencement okay that is the meaning for this and the rules regarding this okay the rules regarding this companies ordinance 2019 act a company incorporated after companies act 2019 which is having a share capital which is having a share capital whether public or private shall not commence any business or exercise borrowing powers okay unless unless a declaration is filed by a director in e form inc 20a inc incorporation 20a form within 180 days from date of incorporation okay so a declaration should be given okay by the director then only they can go for public subscription okay so not only giving a declaration but also company has filed with roc a verification of its registered office has been done or not after this only they have to go for share capital okay then penalty for commencing business before declaration and verification if at all the company okay if at all the business have not commenced before declaration okay and verification of a registered office if at all it has not uh, undergone according to the provisions of companies act means then they are liable to law according to the companies act means uh, a penalty should be paid by the officer every officer who is related to that company okay by default they have to pay 1000 rupees per day till 1 lakh okay so roc can remove name of company from register of companies also for this unlawful acts okay for commencing business before declaration means before giving issuing of commencement of declaration certificate of commencement before giving uh, cert certificate of commencement it shouldn't start okay 
so yeah uh, if at all it does it acts uh, like uh, likewise means penalty will be levied on the on that particular company and every officer should pay 1000 per day okay and if the registrar is satisfied that all provisions has been uh, complied with then uh, he will issue the certificate of commencement of business to the company okay so this is about the a formation or incorporation or registration of a company so the details uh, regarding these i have given in a tabular form okay regarding the registration cost okay because uh, while going for uh, registration every company need to pay some fees okay so which is uh, uh, which incurs cost of obtaining the dsc okay din uh, likewise name registration authorized capital fee professional fee so all these are the cost regarding the registration cost okay so the if we see compliances registration and compliances means they have act according to the company's law okay so uh, what are the uh, requirements okay so as i explained before so those i have labeled here in a tabular form okay so like applying for a dsc digital signature certificate by the promoters or the initial person okay directors uh, likewise director number identification number name availability filing of moa certificate of incorporation okay so all this is regarding the registration of a private limited company okay documents what are the documents required for incorporation this is a proof of identity proof of address pan number utility bill okay all these has to be submitted by the companies okay for registration so what are the documents then documents has to be submitted no so those what are those documents means all these are the documents that a company has to submit with the roc in order to get certificate of incorporation okay so before that first of all what do the they will do means how to register a company means first of all you have to uh, apply in mca which is nothing but ministry of corporate affairs okay you make the application online at mca portal remotely okay so this is about the formation or incorporation or registration of business entities okay